Hi, I'm Nikki Morgan. Hi, I'm Charlene Duplock, and we are the Business Development Managers here at Aspiral Learning at Beacock College. We're now going to talk to you about how an apprenticeship can work for you. Let's go. So how do you like to learn? Do you prefer being in a classroom where you're looking through training manuals, doing your research, going through all the different books? If that's the case, then an academic route would be for you. Alternatively, you've got the hands-on experience. If you prefer the hands-on experience by doing it yourself and putting things into practice, then the apprenticeship route is for you. So, apprentices feel that they have improved their skills as a direct result of their apprenticeship. By this, I mean we had a previous student a few years ago who was unable to secure an apprenticeship before he started college, so he enrolled on the full-time course and then within six weeks he did secure an apprenticeship and after a couple of weeks at the workplace he then said that he had learnt more in his two weeks in the workplace than he had in the six weeks at college. Now that's nothing detrimental towards the teachers of what they've been teaching him because he, was, he had the same teachers. It was just that he was able to put into practice what he was learning in the workplace with what he was learning in college and vice versa. Now we offer nearly 70 different apprenticeships here at BCOT and there are also over 100 different higher and degree apprenticeships available with also up to 28,000 vacancies available at any one time. So on, this, on the screen now you can see all the different levels that you will achieve when you're doing an apprenticeship all the way from a level 2 up to a level 7 that is a lot of levels you can achieve and how far you can go on an apprenticeship. The duration could be anything between one to four years and some level twos and level three are integrated with each other. Each apprenticeship have di has different lengths of programmes and you can take a break between each programme. So if you want to do your level three then have a year off you can follow on and complete your level four. The biggest perks of an apprenticeship is you have a job, you're being paid, and you're saving yourself a lot of money by not getting into debt. One point I'd like to add, and for you all to note, is that when you're doing an apprenticeship, you will incur absolutely no debt whatsoever, as you are in paid employment, and you are being paid to learn your trade from your employer. So please bear that in mind as a different learning experience and a career option for you. So maths and English, everyone's favourite subject. Maths and English are essential parts of your future. So please, 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 whilst you're at school, if you feel like you need any additional support from homework clubs, lunchtime clubs, anything like that for your maths and English, please take the opportunity to go to those. If you can secure a GCSE grade 4 or above, then the options for your apprenticeships will be, will be vast. However, that's not to say if you don't achieve them, all your options are closed because that is not the case. So please do not panic if you do not achieve your maths and English at a grade 4. We will be able to find a solution for you on the apprenticeship route. Uh, it's government policy for everyone to retake their maths and English at college if they don't succeed in a pass rate at school so please just bear that in mind. I don't really want to go on about maths and English too much however it is a fundamental part of your apprenticeships. You will now see a clip from the Borden Future Skills Centre. Hello my name is Steve Gilder and I'm the Head of Construction at Basingstoke College of Technology which also incorporates the Future Skills Centre in Borden. I've been the manager at the Future Skills Centre since it opened in September 2017. The courses we currently run at the Future Skills Centre are our full-time multi-skills course. It's a level two course and it incorporates a number of vocational subjects such as carpentry, hand tools, plumbing, tiling and painting and decorating. There are also some optional units which we'll be delivering later in the year and that includes electrical installation and brickwork. We also run apprenticeships we currently have apprentices for level two site carpentry and level two trial occupations, which is brickwork in old money. The courses we're looking to run for the future, so we are looking to progress our multi-skill students 
into courses such as specialised level two diplomas in the areas that I've just mentioned. We're also looking to introduce the construction at built environment at level three, which focuses on the professional and technical elements of construction like quantity surveying, architecture and site management. All our full-time courses are over two and a half days. So that's 16 hours study programme per week. So the courses are made up of practical and vocational and theory elements to your course. We also have English and maths. Um, so those of you that haven't quite managed to get your grade fours uh, at school, we do encourage you um, to work hard and get your grade four at the Future Skills Centre. We also have personal development sessions and we have industrial placement. So industrial placement is you will go out for up to 50 hours over the academic year and we've got really close contacts with Whitehill Town Council, um, East Hants District Council and Hampshire County Council. So in the past we've done projects with these organisations with our students. We've also got really really strong links with the Whitehill and Borden Regeneration Scheme. So we are heavily involved with those guys with regards to site visits, with regards to our industrial placements, and we have got apprentices that are actually working within that project. So the Future Skills Centre is a purpose-built centre. It's got fantastic facilities. Uh, it's really unfortunate that we can't show you around um, because of the current situation, hence why I'm doing this video in my kitchen in not so sunny Southampton this morning. So for further uh, information and for the opportunity to apply, please visit www.bcot.ac.uk where you can apply. And you can also click on a link within Basingstoke's website for the Future Skills Centre, or you can contact us on 01256 306 400. And fingers crossed, we will hopefully see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Right, now you've seen the different facilities available and the different places where you can go, whether it be Borden or Beecot, we're now going to go through the process of you actually applying for a role and also securing a job. So the first thing you need to do, write your CV. If you have a CV, brilliant. If you don't have a CV, please do not worry. You've got career support at schools and college to help you, or if not, then just go on to Google and Google a template, a CV template. Please don't think that on your CV you have to have everything because you won't have everything, you're just starting out. So you'll have your opening statement to start with. Now you might think, what's an opening statement and how, how do I write an opening statement? So that's where you're gonna sell yourself. And if you find it difficult to write about yourself and all the good things that you can do and what you can bring to a company, then ask a friend or your parents to say what could be the good points and then you can put them in and that will be the starting point for your CV. Then you will put down your predicted grades or grades you've already achieved if you're slightly older than GCSE age and then any hobbies or part-time work that you've done and if you haven't got a part-time job then think what else do I do? I always use the example of babysitting. Do you look after someone's child? And you think, yes, I do. But is that responsible? Yes, it is. And believe me, nobody will leave their child with you unless they think you're responsible. So that is a brilliant one to put down on your CV. So put all that in, done your CV, brilliant. Now what do you do? So now you've got to find a job. So you need to search for a job. So we will show a couple of slides at the end um, of this presentation of where you can apply. So uploading to the National Apprenticeship site, the Indeed site, uh, you can look on our BCOT vacancies page. All the job advertising sites, I suggest you go onto those, create an account, or register an interest for the areas you're interested in. But also, the old fashioned way of just going to employers, knocking on doors, calling them up, just, just say, you know, are you interested in taking on an apprentice? And if they say yes, brilliant. You might be able to do some part time work for them, you might do some voluntary work, just show that you're really, really keen and they will snap you up. I I absolutely guarantee that if you go and ask an employer if you can do some work for them because you're interested in the apprenticeship and you contact them, they will at least get you in for like an informal interview. That's the next stage. So you've done all of that, you've got an interview, brilliant, well done. So now you're at the interview stage. First thing I would say is go to the interview. Don't not go to an interview. I know you're gonna be nervous, we're all nervous. 
I'd be nervous as well when I go for an interview. But what I would say is just go to the interview and remember that you are interviewing them as much as they are interviewing you. Because you might go there and think, actually, I don't, I don't know if I really like these people. I don't know if I do want to work with them. So in which case, you'll know. But if you don't go to the interview, you'll never know. So just have a couple of questions as well. Maybe ask them, you know, how long have you worked here? Um, what keeps you here, etc. And go to all the interviews as well, because the more interview practice you get, the more confident you'll get, and the more you'll realise that everybody asks the same questions. So you've been to the interview and now you've been offered the job. So well done, you've got the job. So as Nikki said, there are three different ways you can apply. So the first way is by going onto the NAS, which is the National Apprenticeship Service website. You can search for all different apprenticeships in all different areas here. We've also got the BCOT vacancy page, which is updated regularly. So please do keep on top of the BCOT vacancy page to see what employers are looking for apprentices. Once you've found that apprenticeship and you've got the employer, brilliant. You will then come through to me and Nikki. But before you reach us, you have to apply on the BCOT website. So please go onto the main website and apply. What I do suggest is please add your employer's details in because that will speed up the process when me and Nikki come to contact that employer. National Apprenticeship Week. That's from the 8th to the 14th of February next year, 2021. And it will be, our event will be on Tuesday, the 9th of February from 4 to 7 p.m. We will be holding virtual apprenticeship recruitment fair where we will have a number of employers, video testimonial of their company and also apprentices as well, explaining to them what they've done or what they are doing within their apprenticeship. Depending on which apprenticeship pathway you take or which area, should I say, that you take, will depend on how your apprenticeship is studied. So some apprenticeships are all in the workplace, so we call those work-based learning, and you will have an assessor that will come out to you once a month into the workplace, so there's no college attendance with those. You will also have apprenticeships where you do attend college, and on the whole, they are the curriculum-based apprenticeships, meaning you will have four days in the workplace and one day a week attending college throughout your apprenticeship. When you attend our virtual recruitment fair on the 9th of February, you'll be able to see the different apprenticeships and which way they fall, whether they're the work-based learning or the day release apprenticeship. So we look forward to seeing you and welcoming you on our National Apprenticeship Week as well. So thank you very much for watching our tour today. Our details are on the screen attached. Please do give us a call if you have any questions or any inquiries. We are here to support. And we look forward to seeing you in the future. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi there all. My name is Jay. I'm an apprentice here at Beacot who worked alongside Nikki and Charlene to make this video happen. I just wanted to say that not all apprenticeships are construction based. They're are many other different sort of job roles out there where you can get apprenticeships in. So there will be an apprenticeship out there for, well, that's right for everyone. Thank you guys for watching this presentation. Goodbye.